One of the things Eric, Eric talked about um, the other day was simplicity and also uh, leveraging and raising the level of complexity across the entire model and doing that in an intelligent way. The folks from Parabuild have a structural steel detailing system that allows us to generate high LOD fabrication drawings directly from a model in Bricks CAD BIM. Thank you. Welcome. Thank you. Um, so like Don says, what we do is uh, we model uh, a fully detailed uh, steel structure in order to generate from that uh, shop drawings and uh, GA drawings, uh, CNC files, bill of material, etc. So we'll show a live demo based on the Brixis uh, Gemini project. And you see on the outside here the steel structure. That's what we'll be working on. And we'll open that in a separate drawing. And these are LOD 200 objects. So we, LOD is uh, level of development, we call it, because it's a uh, design stage. And parabolt elements we call LOD 400 because it's a uh, uh, fabrication stage uh, and fully detailed. So first, well, you, you can just start drawing in parabolt. You don't need to do a conversion. This happens in the background using the BIM API. And so in the, we'll first look at a special case here. So these 50 meter long columns, you can't uh, actually purchase these long columns, so we'll uh, split them up into multiple columns. And when we do that with the break command, they actually stay linked to the original column. So when the original column changes, uh, moves or, or changes size, uh, they all, the individual ones all stay linked. All right, so we'll start adding connections, like this uh, splice uh, connection at the break here. And then we'll use propagate to uh, copy it to the rest of the model. And in this case, the model's all the same uh, section sizes and uh, 90 degrees, but propagate can go to different, uh, copy to different sizes as well or different angles, etc. And Jeff will uh, add more connections. And I'll just explain a little about what, what uh, connections, uh, how connections are made in Parabuild. So what you do is you take a template drawing and you just add more, you just add the geometry and constrain it in the template drawing. Uh, and, and you can use simple, uh, simple equations as well. And then you put it in the library and then it can just be used uh, like any other connections. So this mean, means uh, users can expand Parabuild by making their own connections or changing existing connections. And what Jeff is doing here, uh, well, in, in this case, uh, the connection is, isn't actually, doesn't ex actually exist yet. So what Jeff is doing, uh, he's taking smaller connections and combining them into one. So in, uh, he, he's taking a few cleats uh, for, for the beams against each other. And then on top, he's adding a cap plate. And then he merges them into one. And then he uh, propagates the hole. At this point, you could also put this connection in the library. But right now, we just use it to propagate. And if you have a connection in the library, all you have to do to uh, insert it in the drawing is uh, select a, a general uh, connection type, and then select the members you want to connect. And the library is scanned for all the valid connections for that particular situation. And then you get these choices. And you pick one, and it's applied. So Jeff is. Uh, constraining all the separate situations, and then propagating. And the corner here also needs a different cap plate.
and a few cleats. These cleats are important because afterwards we will connect the bracing to it. Of course, and for the strength of the connection. Add a cap plate and propagate. And that goes to seven other locations in the model. And then this is a similar situation, but the beams are collinear, so we need to treat that as well. And I think that will propagate to about uh, 30 or 50 uh, locations in the model. And then in this case, we'll just uh, do part of the connection because there's actually no connecting element between the two beams. We can just do one side and propagate it to the other side and, and also to 300 other locations in the model, uh, creating over 700 cleats and more than 2,000 bolts. And now they are all connected. And I think we need to do a few more uh, connections, also the horizontal, yeah. This is the same as before, except horizontally. It propagates to about 50 locations. And then we'll do a simple connection for this rod bracing to the cleat. So usually in, in LOD 200, Rod bracings aren't reliable about where they are placed, so you might have to uh, change them. Uh, but that's easily done. You can break the, the link between the LOD uh, 200 and, and 400 so that these, you, you move these bracings and uh, they don't update with the rod in LOD 200. But here we just use them as is. So now these bracings were propagated and everything I think we're about done with, um, with connecting this model. So now we'll look at, uh, we'll go back, the, the LOD 200 model is still there. We can just change visibility and now you see this is the LOD 200 model. And just to, cha to, to, to show you what happens when, when we change this model, we'll move part of the building left and then show you the LOD 400 model. So this is quick and dirty. You'll see a gap. I don't think the move is working. OK. You see a gap, but doesn't matter. Uh, just showing a point. If we then go back to uh, the LOD uh, 400, you can see that the connections all fixed uh, the beams and, and the, the columns were moved. Uh, whose uh, LOD 200 columns were moved. So um, we're also going to add a staircase to the outside of this building. And to start, we'll insert a staircase template we made in advance. So uh, just like connections, these templates can contain anything, uh, a full staircase or trusses, bracings, a full building, etc. And we can uh, change the size because it's fully parametric, fully constrained. So we can change the size by changing some, some of the base planes. And you see everything adapting. Now, um, let's look a little about at these gratings. They're actually constrained as one element. So it's just uh, the, all these uh, crossbars and, 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 and load bars. They're, they're just one element, you just have to constrain the sides. You can just select a different grating from the library. And these steps as well, they are, they are uh, from a parametric uh, template drawing. So you don't have to have 
uh, 100 uh, steps, uh, threads for, for, for all these. Uh, you just have to constrain one thread in a drawing and, and, and a different size is just a matter of different parameters. So let's first look at how we create such a template. So this is basically the base for all that staircase. Uh, it's just two beams constrained between some bases. And if you change the number of, uh, of floors, because each floor has two beams, two platforms, and you get what you expected. We call it a smart array. This doesn't seem so smart, but the smart comes in when you uh, add more geometry uh, to it. So we'll use another, several other templates we uh, made before. So this is a flight of stairs, and we'll put it on the first floor. And when we then change the number of element, number of uh, floors to two, this is automatically copied. And when we now, between the two floors, put another flight of stairs, then the smart array will also check these dependencies and put between all the subsequent floors, put these stairs as well. So all of these stairs are fully constrained and will adapt to changes of, of the floors. So let's look at the completed model and we'll make one more change here uh, at this platform. So we'll make a gap so you can actually get in on, on the staircase uh, and, and just apply a returning rail connection here instead. So this, this completed staircase, it has the uh, the flights of stairs between the beams, and then on top of that has railings on the stringers and on the beams. And uh, then there's uh, another smart array of uh, posts and the between between the railings and and and, and the uh, stringers. And between those posts are knee rails between each post. So when you change then the number of uh, entries. Uh, to eight because there are eight floors. All of these uh, dependencies are checked and copied and uh, the constraints are copied with it. And then you have a fully constrained uh, completed floor. But in this case, uh, our floors don't line up. So we need to change the floor size to 4,200. And except for the first two floors, they are 4.2 meters. Uh, 4.5 meters, so every floor can be a different uh, size and uh, the number of threads will be adjusted because that's also done with a smart array that will adapt and the number of posts will adapt if needed, etc. So now you can see that uh, everything lines up and just to show that each staircase is, is its own thing and not, not just a copy, we'll change the thread size here just choosing a different one from the library. And you can see that all the connections adapt, the railing adapts, and, and the connection to the, the platform adapts, etc. You can change the number of posts. And when you do that, there are more near rails created. And uh, you, you can see that we just did it with one of the stairs, and the other ones stay the same. You can make each one unique. All right. I think we're done with the uh, modeling, so we'll quickly show some of the output. So in this model, we just created uh, 7,000 bolts and almost 4,000 uh, parts, like, uh, like these threads, plates, uh, cleats, members. So uh, to compensate for that, we, we have a numbering system, and that will detect uh, equal parts. And so uh, this way, equal parts and equal assemblies as well. And this way, you get only you can get only one drawing for each assembly, and, and you get a count of 300 of these. And we generate a bill of materials of various types. This one is an assembly list. Uh, it just tells you which uh, plates are welded to which uh, members. And then we'll also we can generate automatic. Uh, uh, position drawings and assembly drawings. We don't have time for a lot, so we'll just show one assembly drawing. It has automatic dimensioning, and the dimension is uh, the dimensions are optimized so they don't collide with each other or 
uh, with uh, any of the ge geometry. So here you see one of these uh, assembly drawings of a column, the corner column, and then you see an extra view added for the base plate and for the cap plate at the end, and they also get dimensions. And you see that uh, the corner columns have four occurrences in the model. All right, so um, we also generate uh, CNC output like DSTV and uh, DXF. Now, DSTV is just a number, it's just machine language, just a number of, uh, it's just numbers in a, in a file, so we'll just show a DXF file of this uh, cap plate. And the DXF file is, is uh, used uh, for the machine to know uh, what size to cut, where to cut it, and uh, where to drill. We'll open that. And you also see that there are contour lines uh, added optionally. Uh, these contour lines uh, are scribed by the machine. And this way, the welder knows where to weld uh, these parts together. And you see the labels you see are also scribed. And they tell the, the welder which parts to weld together. All right, so one final thing to show. Uh, we also export uh, and import uh, CIS2 and IFC files. And then uh, there's a special case with Brixis. They made an export reactor. So when Brixis exports, when Brixcat exports uh, IFC, they, they call upon our elements to attach our elements to this, this IFC export, and you get a combined uh, IFC uh, file. And this, uh, in this, this is the Gemini building. Instead of the LOD 200 elements, we replace them in the, uh, in the uh, combined file with our LOD 400 elements. All right, so that was our demonstration. Uh, thank you to Brixis for making all these APIs, and thank you all for listening. <laughs>